Welcome to the Milturn demo. This demo not only covers Milturn machines, but single stream Milturn machines. Because of machine limitations, some of the functions shown in this demo may not be available on your machine. To find out what your machine is capable of, please contact your reseller or your sales representative. In this overview, we will show you some of the unique functionality of the Mastercam Milturn product including job setup, simulation, and toolpath syncing. I will be using a generic Fanuc machine. This machine has a B-axis head, lower turret, main, and sub spindle. When you open any Milturn machine, Code Expert is the first thing to open. Code Expert is the proprietary code editor um, that gets installed with Mastercam. Code Expert acts as a conduit between Mastercam and the Milturn simulator. You can keep this open, but minimize it. The Machine Group Properties page is the first thing to open, with the job setup being active. Here is where you tell, where you tell Mastercam everything it needs to automate some processes moving forward. It is set up logically, just like most things in Mastercam, where it's a top-down workflow. There's a quick view settings that will automatically update as you update the process. I can select the default chuck or chuck jaws on both the left spindle and the right spindle. I can also add chuck jaws to the setup, edit chuck jaws, or remove chuck jaws and chucks. Minimum and maximum spindle speeds can also be set here for both the left and the right spindle. So let's take a look at the workflow. First of all, setup type. My main or my initial spindle, left or right spindle. We can start in the right if we like, but most jobs will start in the left. Setup type or stock type. I've got several options here. Continuous bar, pick off, stock pull, cut off. Notice if I select that, I've got options for both the left and the right spindle. My WCS, because the part was aligned with the top and master cam, I don't have to change that, but I could use the align to Z function to create a custom WCS. I'm going to select the part geometry. It automatically puts my right spindle geometry on level 100, which I could change if I'd like. I can create a turn profile, and not only can I create that turn profile, but I can edit some of the attributes. And I'm going to change the color, make it darker blue, and I'm going to make that line thickness a little bit bigger. And you'll notice when I OK this that the screen updates automatically, and it puts that out on level 20. With my bar stock, it defaults to the next nominal size, in this case, two and a half. I can add any extra face stock or back face stock. Number of parts is the number of parts I want to have displayed in addition to the part that I'm working on. Tool plane origin is almost always going to be the right face in the left spindle. Part stick out is from the face of my jaw to the end of my part. If I know what that number is, I can put that in. Uh, but I could choose this feature and actually select where I want my jaws to live, and it will populate those numbers for me. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the right side. I'm going to use that, say, here's where I want to hold. And then lastly, I'm going to select the cutoff width. In this case, the eighth of an inch. I could use that icon to select from my tool library. I'm going to go ahead and hit the green check mark. There's a few things that happen. I get some view sheets that get created, which is a nice function because now, because I've created geometry on the right spindle, I don't want to maintain that when I'm working on the left spindle. So if I select the machine group left, machine group right, it only shows that which I would be working on. So there's the left, there's the right, and again, there's both. So to program the left spindle, I would just select that. Notice the stock shows my second part. 
So from here, I'm just going to do some programming. I'm going to select the face toolpath. You'll notice all of the tools are in a tool change position. That's because um, this machine has a B-axis head that will be different, uh, could possibly be different on your machine. And the step that I'm about to do may be unnecessary. But for this machine, I have to rotate that tool out of a tool position, tool change position, 90 degrees. And there's my tool path. I'm going to rough this tool path with a dynamic rough. Chaining dialog comes up. I'm going to get rid of my part solid here for just a minute. Select my chain. First entity, last entity. Again, this tool path, all of the tools are orientated in a tool chains position. I need to select a button cutter, which I just did. I'm going to rotate that down 90 degrees after the tool change. And I'm going to change some of my settings for step over and tool path radius. And calculate that tool path. There we go. And now I'm going to do a finish toolpath. Like I said, this machine is equipped with a um, lower turret. So if I select the lower geometry here that I want to finish, you'll notice that the tools are now orientated the way they will be when I actually use them because it's not a B-axis head. So I can just select the appropriate tool. Make sure all my settings are correct and run that finish toolpath to finish the OD. And there we go. So that's a good start. I'm going to turn my solid back on. I'm going to select all of those toolpaths. And I'm going to select G1. G1 will typically post uh, the code that's going to be sent to your machine, but with the Milturn product, it goes back and opens Code Expert, and it adds this Sync Manager tab. And you'll notice a few things. Um, one is the machine group. It shows my tool paths. It shows the upper and lower um, tool paths that I'm going to be using. G1 is where I would post the code, but there's a launch here. And if I select Launch, that's going to take me to the Milturn Simulator. It takes a second or two, and it will open up. And there's your machine. So if this was your machine, that's exactly what it would look like on your floor, the floor. Your machine housing, your control, your chip conveyor, everything just like it looks on the floor. So typically what I'll do is shut that machine housing off. I don't need to see it. Um, it's still collision checks against that housing. When you see the B-axis head, the main spindle, the sub spindle, the lower turret with our tool loaded in it. And if I just hit play, I'm going to turn my stop conditions on before I do that and select collision as a stop condition. And you can see both my B axis head and lower turret try to work at the same time. And that's because they're independent from one another and they can do the work. But that's a bad situation. And it is indeed a crash. So how can I control that? How can I set that up to where one spindle is going to work and the other isn't? Go back to my sync manager and expand those. And you can see I've just got three tool paths. And because they're independent from each other and try to do the work at the same time, they will do that. But I want tool path number three to wait until tool path number two is done. So the lathe finish. I want to wait until after the dynamic rough. Very simple. All I need to do is create a sync point. So from the end of that to the approach of that, I'm going to sync those up. And what that does is it tells Mastercam to wait. Save that. I'm going to relaunch the simulation. And when I relaunch the simulation, you'll see that the lower spindle waits for the upper, upper spindle to do its work. And then it goes in and does the work. So here's the upper B-axis head grabbing my face, 
It's going to grab my button cutter. At any time during this process, if there was a collision, it would stop. The things in question would turn red and it would tell me that there was a collision. But there we go. So now we're good to go moving forward. So I'm going to minimize those. I'm going to do another tool path here to show you some another unique feature of the Milturn product. These little 45 degree cutouts here. I want to machine that out. So I'm going to select milling and I'm going to select the dynamic mill. I'm going to select the solid face of any one of those. In this case, I'm going to select that one. We'll say OK at that point. I'm going to go in and grab an eighth inch end mill. Set my speeds and feeds appropriately for what I would probably run this at which is a 300 surface feet and a 2,000 per tooth chip load. Set my plunge, turn my RCTF on, my radial chip thing. Setup. Setup is a unique feature for the mill turn. When I go in there, you can see plane rotation is already selected. And in this case, that's what I want to use because of that angled face is a rotation. Normally, I'd have to create a plane, but the mill turn product creates that plane for me which is a, a nice feature to have. Uh, I'm going to go in and change some settings in my toolpath for my cut parameters, my back feed rate, and whatnot. It will help if I put that in correctly, which I'll go back and correct. Going to set my um, no breakthrough. We're going to set my linking parameters relative to that face. So I'm going to put in a, a clearance value a retract value, a feed plane. I know my pocket to be um, 62 and a half thou deep. So I'm gonna set my top of stock accordingly and my depth is incremental zero. And there's my tool path. It's a nice feature to have that those planes will get created automatically. So I'm going to go back and select all of the tool paths now, and it will take me back to my sync manager. And before I launch the simulation, I know I need to add another sync point because now I have an extra tool path, and that tool path needs to wait until the end of the lathe finish on the sub. So I'm going to create another sync point, this time from the end of the lathe finish on the sub to the approach of the high-speed um, dynamic. Now those are synced up. Again, it turns to a yellow light. I'm going to save that and relaunch the simulation. And the simulation, again, will show everything I need to know. All of this can be done with having no knowledge of your machine because the simulation is using the CAD from your machine. So if there's a collision here, there's going to be a collision um, on the machine itself. So there's a dynamic toolpath that's machining out that pocket. Once again, I'll minimize that. Minimize that. So from this point, there's a lot of other tool paths that need to be done on the main spindle. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward. And there's all the rest of the tool paths. So the first setup is complete. Now is time to do the pick off, stock pull, and cut off. Because of all the information that I've entered into the job setup, I simply need to select pick off, cut off, stock pull. All of the information on this page is set and correct. So I don't need to go in here and manipulate a lot of values because I took the time in the beginning to tell Mastercam where I was holding it, where I want to pick it off, um, and all of that stuff. And you'll see when I hit the green check mark here. That programs nine 
through 21. I'm sorry, through 25. Get calculated automatically. And now I, now I have a part in my main that's set up correctly with the correct amount of stock. And I have a part set up in the stub set up correctly with the correct amount of stock. The one thing I do need to make a change is that tool in the lower turret is sticking out too far. And I know that. So I need to go in and change that. So I'm going to go in and set the projection length. So I'm going to take that tool and I'm going to pull it back by an inch. We'll say OK to that. We'll say OK to that. And again, I'm going to select everything. Select G1, which will take me to the sync manager. Shows me all of my tool paths in uh, both streams, upper and lower. I'm going to go ahead and launch the simulator. Obviously, it takes a few more seconds because there's a few more tool paths. And as well, the simulator would take a couple extra minutes to run. But you can see the adjustment on the lower spindle tool. And it runs through my tool paths, all of them. So you'll see that it not only does one of these pockets, it does the, uh, the other three. And I used uh, Toolpath Transform to rotate around my part to cut those other three pockets. In addition to the simulation, um, it, it runs through the uh, Mastercam Verify page. So I can record this as an MP4 and send it out to my operator. I can also save this as a presentation, which saves it as an executable file, which again, I could send to my operator. So he can see what's going on. So we're going to finish this tool path. We're going to come in, and one of the reasons I had to lower that cutter was because the B axis head. So here's a face contour that utilizes the Y axis on the machine. I could utilize the C axis, drill in those holes, and cut that contour. My left spindle is going to come in, pull the stock. Notice I had a collision there. My cutoff tool was sticking out too far. I'd have to go back in and adjust that. I just said, OK, go ahead and go on. And it cuts my part off. And I now have a part in the left spindle with the proper stock. So I can go and machine that and continue. So as you can see, the simulation, the job setup, and the sync manager allow me to program and be confident of my programs of a machine that I really don't have a lot of experience with because Mastercam will show me if I have any collisions, if I have any issues. So I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us um, at supportedaccessinc.com. And have a great day.